the app. Hey, sis, Juicy Plum. Oh, you hi. Plum. Hi, Juicy Plum. Good evening. Don't answer that question of how juicy are you, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will get censored here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hey, sis. That's my other sister, um, Tanisha. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Juicy Plum? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So her and Charlene. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's eight o'clock. Yes, if I some more. All right, guys, thank you. It's the Stancy Lifestyle Podcast. Today is Sunday. I don't know what day it is. What's what, what today's day? Sunday, um, July 16th. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> July 16th. So, what's going on? How's your day? Oh, my day is going well. It's going good. A lot of prepping and getting ready for this event with Crunch on Tuesday. Yeah. I'm so excited. We have a superhero theme. That's cool. And, um, you know, I'm just excited to get out there and give out samples and uh, share new samples with people and talk to the people and talk about health and working out and juicing and nutrition. You know, I get out there and I just go in. <laughs> Like a, it's like a natural thing because you know you really can't prepare for anything you just get out there and i just start talking to people oh. standing at the door handing out flyers and then one thing just leads to the other yeah the same thing that you type you know when you on social media you can do that when you're outside talking to people and stuff you know you have to hide behind the um, phone or the ipad computer right you know yeah i, I love the live the interaction better because it's just you know, it's more fun. It's more, it's more personable. This weekend, this weekend, I was supposed to go with um C Black and his wife because it was it's her birthday. So I was supposed to go with them on this um lobster seafood boat thing. You go on the boat and you eat. Yeah, it. that sounds nice. Yeah, I was supposed to go with um, hubby and everything. But when we searched for the tickets, for the the boarding pass yesterday they were sold out. Like like a like a few hours before, I'm like, okay, all right. Oh. So we just like went to a restaurant, we ate and everything, and just chilled out for a little while. We was gonna go to a bowling alley, but we was like, it looked like more like a redneck bowling alley, so we <laughs> wanted to go. <laughs> we wanted to go somewhere that was like black owned, you know, so we had went to a black restaurant, we ate there. Right. So we wanted to go to like a pool hall to pay pool, but there's no many black owned pool halls that I know of, mm. you know? Because, I mean, if you mention one, it's probably shot up or they shoot anything. You know, it's just different than the other pool halls that you go to. Right. You know what I'm saying? We, we do things just differently. Right. It comes to violence sometimes, you know? But we, we just did that. You know what? I had a glass of red wine. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my goodness. How was it? I was on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know hubby was like, what is going done. on? I was done, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <no. laughs> yeah. Um well, uh we had um come um family came to visit. Really? Daryl yeah, Daryl cousin came to visit and um, you know, we took him uh, we well we hung out by the pool and all of that. And then for the nightlife we went down to Ebor. We took him down there. Okay. And we had a good time. It's always fun down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And it's lots of cars and people. It's just amazing to see that many people outside at that time. Right. You know, like, like yeah, and it's just yeah. it's all of us. It's just it's just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and 2023 to have that type of openness. I just love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I just like, wow. I mean, when you come, you'll see. You're gonna, you have to see for yourself. Right. Because you feel like you are, and it's like everybody does everything right because they want to keep this openness that everyone is outside and just enjoying the nightlife, you know? And it's like a whole, whole strip of just different clubs and restaurants and pizza places and things like that. It don't matter. So we did that. Right. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter race, culture, everybody's out there just yep. having a great time. Mm -hmm. And the police is out there as well. 
Right. Yep. It was really good vibes. Yeah. yeah. So we, we did that. Okay. And that was it. You know, today is back to start the week. You know, I got up, went to the gym, went to the supermarket, got all my stuff that I need for the week. Yeah. Yeah, and getting ready for the week. So did he leave or he's still there? No, he left this morning. He got to go back to work and stuff, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's going. Daryl went to oh, work. He ain't saying he is. Daryl, go. He go. <laughs> He, he lives in Florida, too? Yeah, he lives in Florida. He lives in, um, what is it, Sunshine, Florida, I think it is. Oh, okay. I might, I might not, that might not be right. Sunshine, Florida? But I think it is it's sunny, sun, something sunny. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't live that far, though. Three, oh, well, three hours, three hours. Okay. Everybody's like three hours out. Miami, right. three hours. Everything is three hours, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. You know, I have this this long eyelash right here. I don't know what it, it just don't go anywhere. It sticks out. I wear mascara, it just sticks out like this. And I'm not gonna pluck it because it's gonna hurt if I have a big, you know, bump in my eye, it might be swollen. So I'm like, what do I do with this eyelash? It's just one eyelash. Just you know? pluck it. No, I'm scared to pluck it, it's gonna hurt. Cut it. Cut it. It's an eyelash. It's not gonna. Is it strong? Is it? Is it? Yes, thick. Yes. Oh, I wouldn't mess with it. I don't know what that's about. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I had it for um ten years. It just sticks out all the time. I mean, I try to curl it with the mascara and curl it with the curling thing. It just never works. See, so um, yes, sister Juicy Plum says I have you one too. Cut I cut mine. Yours? Cut it with what? What are you talking about? Don't hair scissors. Little hair scissors. Don't put it all. Over Way down to like the root. She said it's very thick and strong. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's how this it, one piece of gray hair I have. Yeah, I'm a, this well, gosh. well, I don't know if it's one anymore. Maybe two gray hairs now. That's how they are. They are very strong. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I blink and I see it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm like it's just there all the time. Like. Yeah, you gotta cut it. Cut it. Your but, sister cut hers. But then I might have a space, like. <laughs> no, it'll probably grow back. It'll probably grow back. Oh my goodness. Yes. It's annoying, because I talk and I just see it like this. Ow, I'm like, do people see this? That I have one eye that's sticking down, the other one's curled up like this. No, cut it to the same level as the rest, she says. So I have to cut it short? No, but it sticks out. It sticks out. So you just got to trim right. it. Right. It doesn't curl. Right. <laughs> Even when I try to curl it, it just sticks out. I'm like, yeah. just, just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, should I, should I pull it? I'm like, if I pull it, I'm going to get a big bump right. on my eyes. Right, because not if it's strong. You know how if it's like feather, you have like a little hair thing, you could just boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Not, if it's not strong, <laughs> if it's strong, you don't want to pull that. No, I think it hurts. Yeah. I'm be tweezing your eyebrows hurts, let alone your eyebrows. Mm, I, don't, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. I, I can't do that. My mother and them used to do it like it was nothing. Bing, 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 bing. I tried the, um, it. The, I um, tried. Um, the um, eyebrows? I tried, and I've never used the cut thing. I just let the people do it because oh, I don't have that type yeah. of time to take that type of pain. Even when I go to let them thread it, I'm like, it just feels like somebody's cutting you with little sharp needles. <laughs> yeah, Joke though, but I the threading is better than wax. Wax, really? Yes, I'll tell you why. It's just one, two, three. Because my cosmetologist, all my cosmetologists, from all of them, all of them told me, and I, I listened to them and I stopped waxing. I don't wax like you right. wax because you're gonna wax, 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 and when you get up to your 60, they ain't coming back. You're waxing them all, they're not growing back. back. I do them both. Like, why you got right now? <laughs> The redding allows them to grow back and grow yeah. back nice and thick and keep that, you know. Yeah. And I, I started tweezing mine when I was 18. My best friend, mother, used to always like do our eyebrows when we go to parties and stuff like that. She's always tweeze, tweeze, tweeze. So I've been tweezing since I'm 18. I'm like, I got nothing left. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't take that kind of pain. I'm like, it's like little. Yeah. I remember 
I rather than somebody else do it. I can't. I don't. Mm. Nope. <laughs> That's not me. It's my thing. Uh. Uh-uh. So, how often? That's what tonight's topic is. How often do you push yourself out of your comfort zone? Uh, anybody want to join? Anybody can join in and tell us how often you push yourself um, out of your comfort zone. You know, I will go. I push myself out of my comfort zone like every single day, especially since I moved to Florida. Yeah. Because this was a challenge and it was different, you know, being older and leaving New York and living in New York all your life and then making a change. That was a something to push myself out of my comfort zone to be able yeah. to get up and still say, okay, we got to find a gym here. We got to, you know, have the same life that we had in New York. We have to stay to those certain, um, you know, things. And that was just a challenge right then and there. Shoot, driving down here was a challenge. Yeah, just thinking about <laughs> going is a challenge. It's yeah, so it's cool. driving that truck down here, just me and Daryl on the road. It was a challenge, but we pushed ourselves because it was something we know we wanted to do. You know, and... That's what I do every day with like going to the gym. I push myself because I know I don't want to be overweight. <laughs> I don't want to be on medication. Um, I want to be able to fit my clothes. <laughs> I don't want to buy clothes. We go into it's just so many things that makes me push myself out of my comfort zone and say, listen, you have to do this no matter what, yeah. you know? He's trying to live to be like 110. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm trying to, you know, and 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 live. And not kill myself, like we said before, not kill myself, let God take me out of here, but not because I did anything with what I might have been doing and putting in my body. You eat to live, not live to eat. Exactly. That's a whole so, thing right there. All of that stuff pushes me out of my comfort zone. And um, I think that it's hard for me to get into a comfort zone because I'm always like busy, busy, this, this, that. Every time I think that I have a little time, I always have something to do. Like there's no comfort zone. Right. So in years old, there's no comfort right. zone. Right. It's like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. A comfort zone for me is like somebody like when I was a, a young and my mother was paying all the bills and buying my clothes and just doing everything, and I was just living a life of luxury. Yes. That is comfort zone for That's real. Comfort zone, you know, and then. You know, you say, "Ah, I don't want that much a comfort zone because, you know, you want to be able to do your own things and maneuver your own stuff. But I don't think that when you're you're business people and stuff, I don't think we really fall into comfort zones. Yeah. I don't think we have, like, comfort zones. I I think we have where we can fall into, okay, well, maybe that's a comfort zone. I'm not going to do this right now. I'm going to do it later. Or I'm going to start and I'm going to do half of it, you know? That is a comfort zone. And they said, like, even, I think it's ADHD, something like that. Right. They said, um, when you have difficulty, oh, that's 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 the other one. That's completing the task and stuff. But, I mean, my comfort zone, yeah, like, going to the gym. Like, <laughs> like that right there. Yeah, that's my comfort zone. The gym, oh, yeah, the gym, self-care is kind of like, my, you know, my comfort yeah. zone. Yeah. Yeah. My comfort zone. And I don't, being it all goes together, I really don't have to push myself out of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What I have to mostly push myself out of is, like, when I have a lot of tasks to do, mm-hmm. and I'm just sitting here, like, okay, I got to prioritize. <laughs> right. <laughs> what I'm going to do first. Right. You know? So, and that's, like, where I get my comfort zone, and I say, okay, what I'm going to do first? And then I'll be like, okay, maybe I will eat something first, so I'm going to do all these other things. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Before I start this task, right? <laughs> when I shouldn't be doing none of that, I should just be jumping right into the task. It's true. I'm in a comfort zone with, um, with UPS. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I don't like going to drop off packages nowhere at all. So my comfort zone is staying at home, doing all the packages and everything, and just be at the door. Like, that's it. You know, I don't want to do nothing else. <laughs> So. I miss that. <laughs> I miss that because it's not like that here. No? No. I talked to um, the lady today about oh, UPS, like you said, but I still got to go to UPS, you know, and still take it. They're not going to come and pick it up from my house right. and stuff like that. I'm trying to add and it's just different. So those little comfort zones that I had in New York, you know, oh, somebody's 
coming in. Oh, hey, Dimples. So you're going to tell us how often you push yourself out of your comfort zone? Okay. Hi. Hi. So I hear y'all talking about comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, How often my... do you push yourself out of your comfort zone? Well, I don't have a often. I have a comfort zone that is my Achilles heel. So I work in the court, and I used to work downtown Brooklyn. I was there for like 20 years, just back, you know, back office. Right. I was supervisor. I supervise about 12 people. And I, I, I got a, um, a promotion. And when I got a promotion, I was like, oh my God. Oh, what happened? Her, her sound like her phone died. Can't hear you. You can't hear me? No, I can hear you, but I can't hear Charlene. She's not here. The whole video went off. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. I <laughs> you're so funny. Okay, you're so funny. Right now. Um, I it seems like her phone was in charge. You know how you're talking to somebody and it just go. Right, right. That's what it did. Maybe her phone was in charge. Oh, oh, Lordy, she says. Oh no, that's your other sister. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> so anybody else want to come in until uh, Dimples maybe can come back and tell us how often do you push your stuff? Oh, she said, what happened? There you go. I don't know. There you go. Okay. So as I was saying, I worked in the downtown Brooklyn for 20 years. I I got a promotion, and that's when I decided to leave my comfort zone. But let me tell you about comfort zones. They are, let me tell you, it's like death defined. Uh, it's the fear of the unknown. Um, when my girlfriend who passed, God rest her soul, she said to me, Charlene, go to Manhattan, leave Brooklyn, go do, you know, go, go to a better, not just a better court system, but it's the same court system, but better location, right. do something right. different. When I told you I went to Manhattan and first I was on vacation, I went there like late January. I was scared. I was scared. I didn't know what I was getting into. They're like, oh yeah, so you're going to be a clerk and you're going to be in charge of the judge and the court officer. I'm like, me? <laughs> Black officer? Clark? No, I'm not doing that. I got there, put on my big girl drawers, and three years later, four years later, I'm liking it. I don't like the um the divas that I work with right now, but um <laughs> I, I I like the experience. The 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 fact that I left a comfort zone for twenty years, right, and went into something brand new. Yeah, and girl. and that's what it is. We are f afraid of the unknown, but when yes. you get to the unknown. It's 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 butters. It's right. a piece of cake because you ain't no you're not in control. Even though right. I was a supervisor, I wasn't that technically in control. I don't like to use the word control. I I because it seems like I'm 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 you know controlling people. I just like I'm I'm my own person per se. I get to do my own little thing. Everybody got to answer to somebody, but I get right. to do. Coolie chat, shut up. <laughs> Talk about it's beautiful. Yes, that's <laughs> my boo boo. <laughs> So, um, and ever since I did that, everything else was, was okay for me. I could do anything. I mean, right. I, I used to be the mouthpiece of people like, oh, I'm, I don't want to say nothing. Tell Charlene, she will tell everybody. She will, she will get everybody, you know? Right. So it's, it's, for me, that was, it was hard. It was not easy. Yeah, because so, 20 years, long time. That is that's already a long time. In one, in a one, in one place, place. And you yeah. see the same people every day like a revolving door and then you go to some place totally different right you don't understand and man I, I like i said i put my big girl drawers on and i'm like okay i'm gonna do this and he was cool to check and tell you he was like go for it i'm like i don't want to go he said go try it my friend raw they're like listen just go i packed up all my stuff and i'm crying i'm like i don't want to leave this is home right here this is home i don't want to yeah. be here. and my girlfriend she's like just go it's something different a lot of and, opportunities like that. Yes. yes, and we miss them, and we don't take them because of our fear, because we're yeah. scared of the unknown. Yeah, it's the fear of the unknown. 
Yeah. And every day you chat, you you you're faced with that fear of the unknown. Right. Yeah. And so, what are you gonna? You, well, I know for me, I know I have um, God. I know I have someone watching over me and someone who will help me and guide me and lead me and direct my path. So I just go, you know, I just go with it, whatever it is, and say, he'll lead me, he'll direct me, give That's me the right. right way, you know, the things to say, the things to do. And um, I just and, do and it. you have people around you, like my sister, the both of them, um, the Juicy Plum, that's my other sister. And Keisha, Keisha, she's another one. Let me tell you, she's like, sis, don't just do it. She is, Keisha is a no nonsense, no holds bar. Listen, you don't know what you're going to do, get if you don't do it. Right. So just try it. Do That's it. Right. It's better to try to be. and fail than fail to try. Right. Yeah. Like you know. So, I got people. I got people. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what happens until you try. That's True. It. That's yep. it. You know, whether it's um working your business family friends whatever it is you just never know you know right. that's why my comfort zone back in the days too i was real comfortable outside in the street that was so comfortable for me like, right you know, that you, you think that can't beat it you get comfortable being you know uncomfortable saying? but then when you divert and see something else you're like oh man wow okay i'm gonna have to tackle this right here you know mm -hmm. right you never learn true Thanks for having me. I gotta go back and cook. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it was great having you. Who else wants to come on? All right. Simples is here later. All right. Come yes. on and tell us. Good night. Good All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sis. Simples. All right, sis. How often do you push yourself out of your comfort zone? Or our comfort zone? Mom's got that smile. We always cheesing. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm always smiling because, I mean, I'm happy with the way yeah. life has been going, and, and I'm just, I'm just happy, happy, you know. I'm good teeth. <laughs> I know people. Some teams, they if, if you're looking like the um, pack of the M M, the yellow wrapper cookies. I mean, um, the M M candies. Listen, yo, my Muhammad. <laughs> like, listen, my Muhammad is going in. <laughs> my Muhammad is going. In on cleaning my teeth, yo. I'm telling you, they don't play down here in Florida. They don't play. He took an hour and a half to clean your teeth. This is my second one, and I said to him, I thought this was just maintenance. He's like, It is. <laughs> I'm like, An hour and a half. This time I had my headphones, I had my sweater, and everything because you would leave out of there like a popsicle. It'd be so cold. Stay smiling, ladies. Yes, yes. Stay yeah, smiling. So. Yes, 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 we have to. Yes, definitely. And so, oh, thank you, King Heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he said, I wanted to read what he said. He said, um, damn, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that is so true. You have to get comfortable with being okay. uncomfortable. That's true. Yeah. That's going to be in, that she's going to be in, that she's not going to be comfortable in. That right. And I have had a lot of get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's why I can go anywhere. And that's why I can be with any kind of people. Exactly. And that's why I can accept people for who they are, whether they live in a mansion, whether they live in a shack. You know what I'm exactly. saying? If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. That's why I can go to any neighborhood. You can invite me to anything. You can invite me to the high class stuff, and you can invite me to the, the low class stuff. stuff. Either <laughs> way, I fit in. Either way, I'm going to fit in. Because I know what it is to be uncomfortable and be with the uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so... I know how it is. Yeah. When you know how it is, when you've been in those situations, you know how you can just flow with any and every anything that comes your way. It's you know? true. Like even like like I say, with the black and white situation, yes. black people are afraid to approach white people, talk to them, whether they're at work or whatever. And I don't know why is that so. Well, you know, I don't know either, but I find it to be that way down here. But I think because I'm from the north and it's different. And I find it's different in the North. People are complacent. And they I've, like that, huh? And I, more than that. I, yeah, and I've grown up around multicultural in New York. We grew up around all different cultures. And I've worked corporate basically all my younger, you know, adulthood life. So I knew how to be. So down here, it's not a big thing for me because every time 
you know, I'm having a conversation with a Caucasian person at the gym or they're talking about my business, I always get the stares from the black people. Like, they act like they don't talk to white people <laughs> down here. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? People is people and business is business right. and communication is communication. Con con conversing is converse, converse. And it doesn't matter. You know, and so I'll have like the girl over here on the treadmill. I'm who I am no matter where I go. I walk in the gym, I say good morning. If you next to me on the treadmill or the stair step, I'm going to say good morning. I yes. say good morning. She don't say yes. good morning. She look up and down, look me up and yes. down, look yes. all crazy. The white lady, Caucasian lady, I say good morning, she say good morning. Next thing you know, me and her talking. <laughs> now me and her speak every day in the gym. She's giving her juice samples, whatever, whatever. This lady's giving me the face. But I gave you the same thing that I gave her was no different. No different. And we are of the same national background. And y'all always be turning up, turning up your heads and looking the other way. So I don't know what it is. Okay. <laughs> Forget it either. So I just I just go with the flow. Women are women. People are people. And I love people who love me. And I talk to people That's who it. talk to me. And I smile at people who smile with me. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yep. I'm like, I, I, I tell my daughter, I said, listen, be yourself. Right. Always, I don't care what color they are, be who you are at the end of the day, you know? Yep. You are comfortable everywhere you go. Don't be like you can't talk or you can't stand. No, right. be who right. you are because they're they going to like who you are. They're not exactly. going to like who you're not. That's right. You know, so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I love to talk, so. Me too. I love the talk. Oh, my story, so about anything. Anything you want to talk about, I talk about. <laughs> you know what yep. I'm saying? A road to fly. Anything you want to talk yep, about. Yeah, me too. Talk I talk about. Talk about. I saw a conversation today with the lady because she was saying how she was so sad that she just started working at Staples, Staples and she couldn't print out my labels. And I was like, it's okay. It's all right. I'm going to come back here tomorrow. You're going to learn how to do it. And you're going to be printing out labels for me. And she was like, oh, you're so sweet. I hope so. I said, girl, you're going to learn it. <laughs> you know, just not right now. Right. Then I met this other guy, and he told me something, and I was like, I need to look at the printer. And he was like, Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Everybody just start working there. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> he like, I just start working here. He's like, I just moved here. I was like, Me too. I've been here six months from New York. He was like, I've been here um, six months from Puerto Rico. I was like, Welcome. I was like, welcome. I, look, I said to him, I love Puerto Rican people. I grew up with them in New York, too. Because, you know, we have we have every kind of person. So I love it. And I've actually been getting uh, meeting a lot of Puerto Ricans down here that I actually connect and vibe with. Because we have this type of thing. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it is, you know, but yeah. we just vibe. Yeah. You know? The aura of presence and everything, it shows. Yeah, it shows. Oh, so you know it's been good mm -hmm. you know so, so let me ask you um do you usually finish what you begin yeah i usually do i usually do because i want to and i know that if i don't do it it won't get done yes so i usually do i really usually do because it's it's me my family of course but you know right it's me <laughs> so yeah I everything is done accordingly and if it doesn't get done it comes right back to me right so yeah i had to get things done whether it's from business personal you know family or whatever definitely 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 or else i'll be out on, on the street somewhere yeah. yeah i have to finish what i start yeah. too i mean I have, uh, it's, I, it's I, a I, lot i have a calendar on my phone the ipad i have it written down <laughs> <laughs> have notes everywhere, you know? Yes. Some of my and stuff like that, you know, but definitely have to finish. Right. Yes, have to finish. Do you create um deadlines? Yes. I have deadlines. Um mostly on my business, really. But I do have deadlines. I'm I make sure and if I don't do my deadlines I will probably do all for the, like the next week, but I always, always, always come clean on my deadlines because I like to um like like I said before crunch time. Yes, crunch time. I think I, I work better that way. Even in school, I will gag gag all to like the day before time to <laughs> turn paper and right. get out from day before type in like five thousand words on a turn paper. You know, double spaces. Yes. No, no front, no back. Just the front pages do everything, and I just ace it out. Right. I go and I'm and I'm good. You right. Know, it has to be crunch time. It definitely has to be when it's spaced out. 
it's like I go crazy. Me too. I can't. Down to like the crunch time, it's like okay, it's better for me now. Yes. You know, it's just that I don't know that crunch time. It just it's yeah, it just gives me some type of excitement. It's like a challenge. Yeah. You know, I got to meet this challenge, and I love a good challenge. So it's like, oh, this is a challenge. I got to be finished at this time, this day, and I just seem to get it all done that way. Right. And I usually finish. I usually finish what I begin. My aunt calls it. Um, what does she call it? People who just know how to get things done. She used to say, like, you know, um, you'll have some people in the family, like, just people who don't get it done. Like, for instance, example, you got to go get your driver's license. You got to go get your passport. You need to go pay your tickets. <laughs> you need to go, I don't know, you need to go take care of your insurance. You need to go get your teeth cleaned. Just some people are just procrastination. They don't get it done. You know, they keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Like a car. I don't like to wait till the, the lights come on. I like to do the maintenance for the car before the lights right. come on. Some people say, oh, wait until the light come wait on. It's going to tell you. Right. No, that means you don't wait it too long. That's why the light is on. <laughs> <laughs> I like to do the maintenance. Like every six ma every 60,000 miles or whatever, right. until you get the oil change, you know, right. stuff like that. So, yes. I like it. it goes accordingly. Right. It goes accordingly. Yes. So, yeah, I like to finish, um, you know, I finish what I begin. Do yeah. I have a timeline? If I don't finish it, I'm a, like a loser. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how they do it? Wait, wait, am I doing it right? Yeah. Loser. <laughs> loser. <laughs> I'm like, a loser. I'm like, I didn't accomplish it, you know? Yeah, me too. And I don't like that feeling, you know, yeah. especially if I know I had enough time. Because then I'd be mad at myself and I'd be like, you, you know, that's your fault. Yeah. You can't be mad at nobody but yourself. Cause you had enough time and now you done messed up, you done missed the time and you can't get it done. Yeah. You know, and even with multitasking, I, I do multitask, but not too much. I just like to finish what I'm doing. So if I'm doing one thing, I just do it and go to the next and go to the next. Yes, next. I'm glad you said that because they found out, I was reading an article, uh, I think it was like a month ago, and they were saying now that multitasking is actually not really so good. It's good, but it's not because you never really finish sure. the task because you're multitasking over here. You're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing this. So you really never really finish. If you focus on that one task, finish that and move to the next. That's how you get things done. You close it. It's like, boom, done, done. You know, and you can check it off your list. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. That's how, I believe that that's how you get things done. Done, like done, done. Instead of having like five things open, and you ain't not even halfway near the five. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Like, yeah. Done. Right. Simple. So let me ask you: How many things this week do you have on your list to do? Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, I <have> my calendar. <laughs> Where's my calendar at? Like. Oh my goodness. Where are you? Yeah. I, okay. I have a digital and paper. I work so much good with paper. Yeah. You know, because I can visualize it. I have the iPad, the phone, and the um and the and the and the planner. And my sticky notes. And they all say the same thing. So eventually I have to actually accomplish something out of one of them. The disappearing comment bar went away. Can't see what I'm typing. We see you, Dimples. I don't know why it went away. But I, I mean, even at times I've been happy. People are crazy. People are like, would say, oh my gosh, you're so militant. Even my husband, you're so militant. It's a militant. I would have to wake up in the morning, go take a shower, go to the gym, <laughs> or in my schedule at a certain time frame. 4.15, 4.30, 5.15, everything, eat, all the time, right? He's like, but that's how I function. Me too. That's how, how I am. And they were saying the same thing about me, but that's how I do it. You know, and if I get off that schedule, like, I be selling it down, I'd be like, listen, I need time schedules. Yeah. Like, for example, if you want to do something with me, we would do something. If we probably never did it before because we didn't make a yeah. schedule. We didn't make a plan. And as long as we don't make a plan, we ain't gonna never do it. Because I work off a plan and schedule. This day, this time, at this time, at this day, meet me here at this time and this time and this day. And we That's make it, we write it down, and I stick to that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just 
makes your life much fu more functional. More it's functional. Like, yeah. I'm like, okay, you're going to be with X, Y, and Z from, from like 7 to 9, from like 9 32, all you got to do is paperwork. This, it, it's just so much easier to function that way. Yep, and then I'll say, okay, well, I need to stop because I eat lunch around this time, and then I'll come back to this after lunch. I have to schedule all of that in. Lunch, <laughs> everything. People used to be like, I can't. I can't with you. Everything's so... <laughs> That's how you get it done. If not, you don't have no time, especially when you're doing business. You don't have no time for no yourself. Time at all. Nope. You don't have no time for yourself because you didn't schedule it in. And, and they even say with the multitasking thing that I, I was saying, um, people who multitask um, have ADHD because they all over the place and can't even do anything, you know, like just stick to one thing. Right. You know, so that's like a form of ADHD as, as well, you know? Not yeah. Stay focus on something, which you all right. on other things. Right. After so, how so I focus, I say, okay, well, what's the most important? Right. You know, I prioritize it. Right. right. So, well, the most important from the time I wake up is prayer and gym. That's it, yeah. And all the things that go in there, like brush your teeth, brush your face, take a shower, all of that. That's important. Now, after I come back from the gym, I'm prioritizing now what I need to be starting my day. For the day. You know, what am I going to do first? What time is it? What time of the day is it? And what things I need to do first? Yeah. And yeah. more of the time I'm consuming things, I do those first. Like how we say that we're early people. I like to be yes. If like even the store at nine o'clock, I might be like at eight forty five, like where you know what I'm saying, but it's not to open up, you know. I used that's to be like that when I first moved here because Walmart opens at six a.m. Mm. And so <laughs> Daryl was like, "What?" I was be gung ho. I'm ready at five thirty at the thing, out the thing, six o'clock, right there when they open. They still packing stuff out. I'm coming in. Exactly. But then what? happened here i would get there at six o'clock and when i came out at like six thirty seven, all the people would be going to work and i'll be mad because i don't go nowhere i just sit in traffic yeah. and then my little six o'clock thing that i thought i did something became into like a whole long morning drag down so i stopped going at, yeah. at 6 a.m yeah i go now like in the afternoon when everybody's at wherever they at right yeah i'm <laughs> early because like me also my comfort zone is home because yeah at home, don't have to go outside. I'm happy. I was, oh Me too. Gosh, Me too. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I gotta go nowhere, but I dread going outside sometimes. Like, oh gosh, I go outside. I do it. I do it. You know, I just dread that. So my comfort zone is my home. I love to stay home. You know, so definitely. But like we say, going outside early, getting things done, so you can have the whole day yeah. and accomplish. Yes, you have the day for yourself to do other things. You know. That's why even here, I'm just trying to time it. It's just more driving. But when I look at it, it's the same. You know, I'll take one route and I'll be like, okay, well, that's like going from here to Long Island. Or that's like going from here across right. town, you know? Right. So it, it averaged out to the same thing. You just got to get up and just do it, you know? Just get out there and just do it. And I just dislike people that actually wait until like the afternoon to do things when they can do it in the morning. Me too. So I'll call somebody. A company. Why you went to three o'clock when you had the all whole morning? I tried to call them. Like, you went from three o'clock now. Like that's just so like. It's just I just this. Oh gosh, I just dislike that. I know. Me too. Like, I'm, I'm ready. Let me know early in the morning. You know, we can yeah. get it done early in the morning, and I can help you out, and I'll function better because that's my time. Yeah. Like everything that I have to do. Like if I have to drive a road trip by myself. I'm going to get up like I'm going to the gym. I'm going to get up 4.35. I'm going to be on the road early like I was at the gym because that's where I'm at my best time in the right. morning. You know, I get everything done right. at that time. Yeah. It's even like yesterday we, we went out, had a glass of wine, knocked out. I woke up 4.30 in the morning. Right. Sunday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like... <laughs> it's a program. Yeah. Your body is already programmed. And you can't beat it, you know? When I used to go, go on vacations or spend the night at a friend's house, they'd be like, Tamisha, you really you getting up or lay back down. <laughs> Why you getting up so early? I can't. This is this is just my body makeup. This is what it does. No matter where I'm at, it's gonna do that. Now maybe I might get up if I'm on vacation and I might right. you know, go work out. Maybe I might lay back down and relax. Yeah. But just know I'm gonna be up at that time. Right. No alarm clock, yes. no nothing. I'm just up. Yes. Yep. And if if we all like that we could get a lot of things done in this we world sure can. let me ask you this question i you know um when did you um 
And you guys, if you want to come in and tell me too, when did you realize your wake up call? Because I tell a lot of people, I was getting up maybe not 435 at one point in my life. And then one morning, like, I don't know if it was after my mother passed or fiance, but whatever, I start realizing God's wake up call. And when I got it, I was up. I was like, it's something he want me to do. Yo, he wake me up every morning at 430. It's no alarm clock. It's no nothing. So then I start really taking that serious. And I really start putting my best foot forward when I get up in the morning. And I'll be like, it's some stuff he want me to do. So I need to be getting my life started, basically. And I stuck with that, right. you know? Like, mine, it's waking me up for a reason. Mine was <laughs> when I was in my car and my car got shot up. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, like, so that was my wake up call. Mm. Like, the like, car got shot up. The bullet hit the um, gas tank and everything. She could have blew up and everything. So that was like my wake up call. Um, yes. And then even after that, like the day after that, I had to hop out the window, you know, because somebody shot <laughs> the person that I was with. They came in the crib and shot him in the chest while right in front of me I had to jump out the window. So those two instances right there, like a day apart, was my wake up call. I said, you know what? Mm -mm. I'm not going to be six feet under. I'm not going to be going or in jail or anything like that. I gotta get out of this thing. So that's my wake up call. Get the hell out. Do better and be better. Right. No, but when when did you realize that you was waking up at four thirty? Um, this day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm telling you, then. I okay. Said, no, I have to do better and be oh, better. Oh, okay. 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 Right then. That, that was the wake up. Right. Got there. it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that that was the way I, I I didn't need anything else, Tanisha, at all. And I swear to you, like the next like the twenty four hours after that, I was done with everything. I got up the next day, boom, you had to do take things into into consideration, life, family, friends, yeah. everything. Every morning since then, I've been doing that. Right. Yep. I mean, Me too. But I know that you could be here to today and because I've seen it happen just like this. Yeah, yeah you, you've seen it, I've seen it. And, you know, I don't think a lot of people have experienced it on those levels. Right. So I don't think that's why they take their wake-up call seriously. Right. Like when God gives you that first breath in the morning, you should be getting up and getting your life started, you know what I'm saying? Because it's the reason why he woke you up, so you can things you got to do and stuff like that. I don't think a lot of people take that so serious because maybe they haven't experienced, you know, those type of deaths and those type of things right. that happen so quick around them, you know, so they... When their loved one pass away, they do it for like a minute and they go, huh, that's, they don't know. It's still like back to the old thing or whatever, like, I don't care, whatever. No, 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 no. That right, right. there, that shit woke me up. I'm like, yo, I changed my life, do things different. Me it's too. That's, yeah. And, yeah. It does, it does, it does, because, yeah. The people are not here anymore. No. no. And I think it just gives you extra. You just yeah. got to keep moving. Yeah. Because yeah. when my mother did stuff like that, I was still doing all that because of what happened to me prior. Like, so I was still doing all that, you know? So e even when she passed, right. But that happened. That's the reason why I was doing all that, you know? Right. So, whew, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, you know, it's, I mean, I don't understand how people can't wake up from, from that. I just don't get it. You know, yeah. it's fun about it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nothing fun about it. No, it's not fun yeah. about it. Yeah. That was but, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You learn, though. Yeah. You know, it helps you. It builds It builds a stronger you, a stronger version I, of yourself. Back from that, we should never look back. Never. Right. I wake up early, start working, not because back then I wasn't working, I was doing all that, I was just, whatever. I was there, woke up early. Me too. <laughs> they used to be so they mad at me. Turkey, just change in a matter of seconds. In my house, they'd be so mad at me, and Donna's be so mad at me because I get up at 4.35 in the morning, right, and I'm running the juicer. Oh, forget it. When COVID was happening, oh, they were just mad at me because I was working out in the house. Moving couches. Yo, I had my speaker in the middle of the floor. Da, 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 da. Like I was at the gym. I had the smoothie going, music going, <laughs> running outside in the backyard, coming back. 
thought I was crazy. You know, <laughs> a lot of times Adonis thought I was crazy. I was like, no, your mother is not crazy. I have to do this. You don't understand. This is my health. This is my mental. This is everything that keeps me going. That makes me the person, the woman that I am to get up yeah. every morning and yeah. be able to do this. If I don't do these things, I have a yes. Yeah. I, that and pray. I have an attitude. That's why I'm on vacation. I work out and I have to do these things. This, this is my regiment. This is who I am. Yeah. So if I can't do it, I got a problem. <laughs> yeah. That and pray. Yes. Yes. I go crazy. Mm hmm. Can't something that the devil starts to come in. <laughs> right. Yes. You have to. You have to keep that at bay. Yes. Mm hmm. Yes. 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 So anybody, anybody want to chime in and tell us? Do you usually finish what you begin? You know, how often do you push yourself out of a comfort zone? Um, anyone can come in and tell us, you know, how do you deal with it? Your comfort zones and do you usually finish what you begin? Do you have timelines? Do you have multiple calendars? Like we have phone, paper, sticky notes. <laughs> Dippa says she got sticky notes everywhere. <laughs> yes, sticky notes really, really help. Yeah. They really help, yes. You know what I miss? I have to do here. Um, I miss I miss my dream board. You know. All oh, right. I mean, I have to make one here because you know I had an office, so you know I would get up early in the morning, go to my office, do my thing. You know, so I miss that. So I need a dream board here. Yeah. So I can dream. He said, "Oh, only at work." She stayed till five fifteen, unless. Okay, she leave at five six to five fifteen. You know that's 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 one thing. You know I call it the slave or always. You know, the, I'm black, they're white, whatever. So I call the slave, right? So but one thing, even working, if I had to leave at five o'clock, yo, you best believe by four forty five, I'm getting ready to leave. So by four by five by four forty nine, I'm getting my bag and everything. By like um four fifty five or something like that. Think about I need to go. Yo, by 4.59, Tamisha, I'm at the clock, winding down, winding down. I don't want to stay after one minute, but I hear you, sis. I don't want to stay after one minute. I think I just go crazy. I used to be like that with my early part of working, you know, when I first right. came into corporate and stuff. But after I was at corporate and I had been pulled around a couple of times in different jobs, listen, you couldn't get me. I'd be out. Yeah. They be like that. I'm, I'll have a great day. Have a great week. And yeah. See you later. I just, I just feel like I don't know what it is. I just feel it's just slavery. And, I just especially don't. if you're not hourly. Like I was mostly salary, so I just come in and sit down in the desk and leave. Oh, I'm definitely because you don't get no more money. You don't get no time to have. You don't get nothing. So if you stay, that is on you. So I will finish up all my stuff by four forty-five. I'm done. I'll be going to the bathroom. Reapplying my lipstick, right. getting myself together. <laughs> you know, when I used to smoke cigarettes, okay, right. let's talk about it. At four thirty, I took a cigarette break. <laughs> <laughs> At four thirty, I used to take a cigarette break, come back upstairs, wash my hands, go to the bathroom. By the time I get back to my office, it's four forty-five, and guess what? I'm about to be telling them goodbye. I've been stop stop working at like four 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 ten four fifteen. Please don't let me take a late lunch at like 3.30. And they were asking me to stop. Don't, please don't do that. Can everybody in the office please take your lunch up into 2? Yeah. 2.30. 2.30, like not like 3.30. But, you know, I'd be like, well, I had a lot of clients, a lot of people. And, you know, just happened that way. I used to be like, why am I taking lunch at this time? I'm not hungry at, at this time. <laughs> How you going to tell me when to take oh, lunch? Oh, boy. I remember I had a job that lunch started at 12, I think 11 or something or 12 o'clock. I was, I was like, I'm not hungry. I can't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I didn't want to eat. I'm not hungry at that time. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, she said, I have my days when I had cigarette breaks. I don't smoke, but I'm taking one. Yeah, I don't smoke either. I, I quit cold turkey. It's going to be soon 12 years oh, of smoking yes. Newport. Yeah, I quit cold turkey. I told you that story. A lady that had that commercial is killing me and couldn't get up the steps. That was me. But I used to be out there. I think... I think we smoked more cigarettes and took more breaks than we was at our job, working at our desk. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. It got to the point where one job I was at, they told us that me and my friend, that we could not break together. But she would call me on the phone and be like, yeah, we're going to smoke a cigarette. I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to come down and smoke a cigarette with you. And we was doing this every day, all the time. Yeah, I was going to smoke a cigarette with you. And then I guess they was looking for us at one time, and then they came find us. I'm like, where the hell are they? And then they said to us, y'all can't go down and smoke cigarettes together because... 
whatever. We had to do whatever, whatever. But yeah. <laughs> All the cigarette people used to always meet up all <laughs> together. Always back in the days, like always, yep. all the time. Yeah, a bunch of people downstairs smoking cigarettes. <laughs> always outside. <like. laughs> yep. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, those it, were the days. Yeah. That's me. I tell them I eat whenever I'm oh, hungry. Yep. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then I would go and I would eat my lunch at my desk, right? Eat my lunch at my desk and then go out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, eat my lunch at my desk and then go out. Like, I go after lunch is between 12 and 2. I eat when I'm hungry. Yep. It's mm -hmm. I, it's okay. it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, I yep. You say what now? I know. You look no, I know. And my mother wasn't like that, like that authoritative kind of parent stuff, you know. She never yelled, she never said, you know. So when I have these things growing up, I'm like, hold on. Woo, we got to tone it down a little bit, you know what I'm saying? It's not how we do. Respect me. It's not what it is, you know. So right. I, I, I do know I get that from her. I do know that from the household upbringing, you know. It's like right. um, when she talks to me, it's like, Keisha, can you X, Y, Z? Can you wash dishes? Can you do this? Is, is it that? Go do this. Go do that. Go do this. Go, you know? So I'm kind of like, uh, literally when people talk to me certain ways because that's not how my mother spoke to me and that's not how I was taught to speak to people. So I, right. I want to be treated, you know? So exactly. that's kind of like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, days exactly. Of, work late, still take their lunch break. Yeah, black folks. <laughs> On days when I go to work late, I still take my lunch break. Yeah. Yeah, I always took my lunch break, and then, like I tell people, I got to the point where hmm, I ain't even eat at the desk no more. I work, I, I, I work so much for corporate and so much jobs. You couldn't even get me to stay in. I, as soon as it's lunchtime, I'm out. I'm going because I don't want nobody coming to my desk. Don't ask me nothing because you don't even get a lunch break. You come over, and cut this check. Can you do this for me? What? I'm on lunch break. I remember one time I made a sign. I put a piece of um, you know, I like I'm a comedian. I like to have make people laugh. I put a string. From my desk to the other person's desk and put a little sign on lunch break. <laughs> and I was serious. Like, don't come over this string. I'm on my lunch break. Y'all don't see this string? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was messing with them, but that didn't work. So I just get up and leave. I be like, I gotta leave. I go sit in the break room <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> and eat my food. My they be like, nobody sit in the break room. I do. I'm gonna sit in the break room, I'm gonna eat my food, and then I'm gonna go in my car and go to sleep. So <laughs> My car, go to sleep, set my alarm clock, and wake back up and come back up. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yep, I remember those days. I tell you, I tell you. Mm. Yep, those were the days. So awful. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my God. What else? Let me have a moment. Oh man, no one knows. Oh man. So, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, don't forget to um, go to Novi Essentials, have all the self-care. Actually, I have some soaps as well. The soaps that you guys like from before, this rose soap. I have this rose soap with rose petals. I'm actually crushing the petals a little bit more spineless so it won't get stuck in your bathtub. But good. it smells good. of soap. It smells so good. That's like my number one seller. Like when my mother was alive, you know, it smells so good. It makes your um, skin so soft. So Novi Essentials, go um, order, follow, like, share. We have some fall and winter stuff coming up. You know, it's July, so it's like Christmas in July right now. So, um, yeah, go order Novi Essentials. Yes, I love it. I love it. I, love it. I need some of yes. that. Yes, yes, um, definitely. November, come to see you. So we're going to have a lot of things to do. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to have a lot of things to do. Yeah, well, heal thyself, you know, stay for following healing vibes. Things are coming through, happening soon. And, um, yeah, follow my podcast. Someone needs someone. Oh, um, <laughs> this episode was sponsored by Brooks Media Group. Remember, yes. um, go to IG, that's B-R-O-O-K-E. You know, we are brothers and sisters for real, for real. And his last name is K-E-S and mine is K-S. But it's still Brooks. But um, <laughs> that's the Yeah, I, I noticed that. Because on his birth certificate, it's E-S. On mine, is S. 
it's written in ink in Antigua. They write in ink back in those times or whatever. Because they'd be so right. they probably with the kiss spell. So they put his K E S and mine's K S. Crazy. But um, go follow him. He has portraits for your events, for weddings, baby showers, um, everything. So that's Brooks Media Group. That's B R W O K E S Media Group. Okay. Um, what do we have going else? What's on? It's the healing feature soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feed your soul. Don't, don't be afraid of growing slowly. Be afraid of standing still. Plan, execute, and have no fear of what lies in front of you. We just want to fear. <laughs> yes, yes, right? Mm hmm. Well, let me see. What's my feed your soul? Feed your soul with good vibes, good affirmations, good things every day. Because what you feed your soul is what you're feeding your inner self. And what we tell ourselves is how we react. You know, like how you think of yourself, how you feel about yourself. So make sure you're feeding your inner self good things, good vibes. And you're feeding yourself love. Absolutely. Yep. We're going to do for the week now. Like a word for the week. Word for the week. Word for the week. Step out of your comfort zone. There you go. That is perfect. Step out of your comfort zone. Whatever it may be. I have to step out of my comfort zone, too. Step out of your comfort zone. Challenge yourself to do something new or something that you wouldn't normally do or something that you may feel afraid of doing, but you know you have it in you to do because, you know, you just keep getting, you know how you keep getting that little feeling like, I know this is for me. I know I should do this, but you just have that fear and you start sweating and anxiety and your palms get all sweaty and you got to use the bathroom and all kinds of things start going on. <laughs> that means to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what that means. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So guys, thank you for joining us today on this Nancy Lifestyle Podcast. Don't forget to follow, like, and share. T. Miller, Heal Thyself, INC, Know the Essentials, um, the Stancy Lifestyle Podcast and Brooks Media Group, okay? And also, King Harvey Studios NYC. Look at all him, too. What's up, bro? All right, so thanks again for watching and listening. I'm Keisha B. Demisha Mella. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.